one by one. Okay. Okay. Here, here. Actually, moderator one and moderator one and moderator two. Can you see them on the name list? Moderator Mo one and moderator one two. And moderator two. They both are our co-hosts. Just transfer to them. Yeah, okay. Thank you so them. much. Yes. And also, we one have moment, one moment. Let's get do one by one. Moderator one. No problem. And moderator. Yeah. It's written there as moderator one. And also moderator two. What is the name of the moderator one? Can you just tell the uh, names, please? It, it, it's called moderator one. Can you no, just no, no, keep the name? One called moderator one. Okay. Make both of them. Then and moderator two. Yes, yeah, yes, both. And then who else? M moderator, moderator two. Yes, they are both done. Now, who else do you want to yeah. be made co-host? Oh, uh, all this are set, yeah. and right now we want to have our interpreters in. So interpreters would not have co-host rights. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Hello, this is uh, interpreter Alicia. Can you hear me? So uh, the host and co-host, could you please assign me and my colleague as interpreters so that we could start testing? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's not working because in China, we do not have account service, so we cannot come directly as interpreter. Yes, you have to assign us as interpreters so that we can have that channel. No, but, I think we do the uh, rehearsal and uh, your colleague helped us to do that uh, two days ago, one day ago. It's Louise. Louise. Yes. Speakers are speak in Chinese, and I think we really need an interpreter to help to do the translations. Yes, actually, the host has has the right to assign interpreters because uh, we do a rehearsal with Louis, and he helped us to do that. Yes, there are interpreters in the room, me, and also my colleague. With the name ASAP, and so, yeah. yes, we are here in the meeting room. Uh, uh, could you find a staff to uh, help? Okay, so how many times do we have? How much time do we have? We will double the time, I'm sorry. Okay. And uh, do we have like a co-chair? Co-chair can also send the interpreter. Okay. Um, moderator one or moderator two? Uh, do you have like a globe or interpretation? at the bottom of your screen. It, it is uh, Alicia 
and Celia. And yeah. Celia. Celia. I'm sorry, I'm not the interpreter. I think I find Alicia, but not me. Uh, I would change my name into English. Um, I got the Chinese at the beginning. Interpreter. Celia. Can you see that? My name is Interpreter Celia. My partner is working, but I'm not working. Interpreter, Interpreter Celia. Can you see it? I see interpreter Celia C E L I A. We have two interpreters. We have two interpreters, so both of them need to be signed as interpreters. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes. Thank you so. 好的,那我们现在就开始整个。All right then, let's get started. Distinguished experts, participants, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to join us here tonight at this IGF 2022 Open Forum 25, Explore the Road of Intelligent Society. I am Zhang Feng, moderating this evening session. I'm from Qinghua University. So here on behalf of the organizer of this forum, I would like to extend our warmest welcome to all of you. Now let me first start by introducing to you delegates here tonight. Zhang Peng, Deputy Director General of Information Technology Bureau of Cyberspace Administrator for China. Um, Professor uh, Sun Jun from Qinghua University. Uh, Zhang Hopkoff, the IBM Professor of Engineering and Applied Mathematics in Computer Science at Cornell University, and a uh, Turing Awards winner. And also, Zhang Xiao, uh, VP of China Internet Network Information Center, and also uh, Simon Martin, Professor Urban Institute of uh, Sheffield, and Huang Cui, Professor. Dean of the Institute of National Intelligence Society Governance University. And also, we have Wang Yingchun, a uh, researcher and secretary general of the Expert Advisory Committee of a National AI Innovation Pilot soon in Shanghai. So, here for this open forum tonight, we are so glad to have delegates and experts from different uh, fields. Uh, welcome all. So, here, please allow me to invite seven experts and scholars from this important field to pull our resources and wisdom to make our contribution to the future development. So now let me give the floor first to Mr. Zhang Peng from the Cyberspace Administration of China. Since he has other important arrangements tonight, so he sent us a pre-recorded video. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to the UN Internet Governance Forum, Open Forum 25 on clear meaning with artificial intelligence in society, exploring the past smart social governance ahead of the curve. It is a pleasure to be with you online, on, on site, of course. I'd like to thank you all for your participation, and also I'd like to pay my special thanks to at the OP this year's host country. In today's world, a new of technological revolution and industrial change represented by artificial intelligence and other technologies is driving rapid economic and social development. And intelligent technologies are affecting human development in an unprecedented manner, pushing time from the industrial age to the information age. Exploring paths of for a smart society has become a major and proposition of the times. The Chinese government always attaches great importance to AI innovation and its impact on social development. President Xi Jinping pointed out that artificial intelligence is an important time for 
amount of technological revolution and industrial change, and called for promoting the integration of artificial intelligence with economic and social development, and promoting the healthy development of a new generation of artificial intelligence in China. Recent years have seen China carrying out a lot of work on the intelligence and social governance. In 2021, a national program on intelligence and social governance was initiated around key areas in in education, healthcare, and elderly care. For this framework, 92 experimental cases were built. Hundreds of application scenarios were set up to explore what can be done in operational laws and regulations, standards and norms, policy systems, and institutional mechanisms of intelligent society. This program has generated impressive results. I would like to share take this opportunity to share with you a few thoughts on social governance based on the work that we have been carrying out in the past years. First, artificial intelligence should be promoted to improve public services. In the integration of AI with public services such as elderly care, education, health care, social services, and use AI technology to enhance the public services and social governance of government departments from the perspective of safeguarding and improving people's and creating the need for a better life for the future. Second, we should study and mitigate the potential risks in the development of AI technology, promote research on legal, ethical, and social issues related to AI technology, establish sound laws and regulations to safeguard the healthy development of AI technology, formulate ethical norms for the governance of intelligent societies and effectively safeguard the interest of the people and the national security. Third, international exchanges and cooperation on smart social governance should be enhanced. Guided by the concept of the community of a shared destiny for mankind, we should adhere to technology for the greater good, agile governance, and inclusive sharing of smart societies and achieve differentiate uh, show uh, development and win-win cooperation among countries. China is willing to share its working experience in smart social governance experiments with other countries and actively contribute to Chinese solutions. Today's forum serves as a wonderful platform for us to share ideas on global smart social governance. We look forward to your insights and wisdom in the upcoming dialogues and its of new findings, methods, and paths for future smart social governance. We're willing to strengthen cooperation and exchanges with countries around the world, guidance stakeholders such as governments, industries, academia, research, and application institutions work together to promote a benign and benevolent development of AI technology, a humanistic intellectual society, and promote the building of a community of a shared destiny. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your wonderful remarks. Now, let me give the floor to Professor Su Jun, Dean of the Institute of Intelligent Social Governance of Tsinghua University. Distinguished expert scholars, Professor Marvin Scofield, ladies and gentlemen, and my colleagues from home. Dear friends, online and on-site, good evening. It is a pleasure for me to be here with all of you to discuss the future of smart societies with friends around the world at the 17th United Nations IGF. The theme of my speech today is Toward a Smart Society with a Human Touch. Our world today is witnessing a new round of technological revolution and industrial change represented by digital and smart technologies, disruptively restructuring human society and bringing about significant and far-reaching impacts on economic development, social governance, and people's lives in countries around the world. Countless people are now asking what kind of intelligent society we should build for our future generations. As an old Chinese saying goes, it is better for the doer to undo what he has done. We are the initiators of the smart technology revolution and therefore are the champions in addressing the new challenges of a smart city and the risks of a smart city. 
In the face of the huge changes brought about by artificial intelligent technology, the world is searching for new values, new ideas, new directions. The search for smart social governance requires scientific approach to study and respond to the various issues, risks, and problems posed by science and technology. We need to focus not only on technological development itself, but also on a systematic and comprehensive assessment of the ongoing impact of technology on society, culture, and pol politics. So uh, it is important that we adopt a long period, long-term multidisciplinary and well-field evidence-based research methodology. So facing the systematic risks, all of us are now trying to explore new values, new directions and new modes. So as you build a society, a smart society with human touch, but that would be greatly dependent on whether we can go beyond the limitations we have and to avoid the long tail effect. And if we can have enough intelligent and wisdom to restructure the um, current world order. So it is important for us to not only focus on technologies themselves, but also to have a systematic and comprehensive understanding about the sustainable impact of science and technologies on our society, culture, and politics. And we need to maximize science and technology developments to identify and to mitigate risks and challenges. So it is important for us to conduct a long-term multidisciplinary and evidence-based research methodology, gain an in-depth understanding of the process and the mechanism of human social transformation, and establish the people-oriented research system. China enjoys unique advantages in research on evidence-based intelligent social governance based on social experiments. And according to Shun Peters' a theory of technological innovation, a technological process generally consists of four stages, basic research, common technology, development and demonstration and diffusion, and also known as RN3D. In this regard, China enjoys unique advantages in many different aspects. Actually, Statistics suggest that by June 2022, China's AI industry scale exceeded 400 billion RMB. The number of enterprises exceeded 3,000. 1.7 million 5G-based stations were built and 150 large industrial internet platforms were developed, connecting more than 78 million industrial devices. It's fair to say that China has formed an AI development pattern with in-depth technology research and development, huge industrial scale, diverse application scenarios, and numerous social needs. And the rich and diverse application scenarios have become China's unique advantages and resources, and will land in China in a very good position in of providing the world with valuable experiences, references, and ex best practices into our global counterpart. Make our Chinese contribution to that. In order to give full play to the advantages of China's extensive, in-depth, and diverse AI application scenarios, and to further explore the impact of AI technology on human beings, organizations, and society as a whole, so as to further promote the application and development of AI technology and enhance the effectiveness of governance in an intelligent society. My colleagues and I took the lead in launching the initiative of conducting AI social experience and exploring the Chinese road to intelligent social governance in 2019 based on long-term research. This initiative was re has received a strong support and active participation from the Chinese governments, industries, and academia. It has been officially written into a publicly released a policy document by the Central Committee of the CPC State Council. Now, eight departments, including the Cyberspace Administration of China, the NDRC, and the Minister of Education, have built 92 national 
experimental basis for intelligent social governance in 22 provinces across China. The Minister of Science and Technology is conducting AI experiments in 18 AI innovation and development pilot zones across China. A group of experts and scholars have actively carried out research on intelligent uh, so social governance based on social experiments. Tsinghua University has established the Institute of Intelligent Social Governance, which integrates the strength of multiple disciplines and has carried out long cycles of tracking observation and research on topics such as AI, enabled urban governance, construction of digital villages, and the transformation and upgrading of rural e-commerce, addiction to cyberspace, and the impact of AI on children's growth, etc. Once again, our world is now standing at the crossroads of history. Our generation was born at the right time and ex experiencing a period full of opportunities. While humanity is transforming from an industrial society to a smart society, it is particularly important at this time to maintain our original aspiration and determination with the humanistic spirit. It should be the mission of all scholars in building an intelligent society with a humanistic touch, namely putting people first and putting them at the heart of our work. Here, I'd like to put forward a few initiatives to discuss with all of you. First, with this IGF forum, we should uh, set up a, a global academic alliance on smart social governance so as to deepen exchanges and corporations and work to build a smart society with a humanistic touch. Yeah. Second, we should establish an information sharing mechanism. My team and I are willing to build a data sharing platform for AI research, regularly publish research results, and develop, re um, develop research, uh, reports and share first-hand data with experts and scholars around the world. Third, we should establish an international cooperation fund. To do that, we need to mobilize the resources um, from a wide range of forces in the world, establish an international cooperation fund for smart social governance and build a corresponding international ecosystem. Fourth, capacity building for smart social governance should be enhanced. Smart social governance is an emerging field that involves multiple disciplines and should be de developed through training more talents and organizing international uh, events like workshops and conferences. And dear friends, the smart society is a blue ocean never before touched by mankind. Let us work together to integrate the practice of technological innovation with the social experiment of artificial intelligence and actively explore the path of people-oriented smart social governance with human touch. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. 感谢苏俊教授对中国智能社会治理实验、智能社会治理理论研究的精彩报告。下面我们有请美国康奈尔大学教授图灵奖得主约翰·霍普特罗夫特先生做题为《人工智能治理的报告》，大家欢迎。It's time to speak. Uh, the world uh, is undergoing uh, an information revolution uh, that will impact all aspects of our civilization, uh, just as the Industrial Revolution changed the nature of society. AI will be a major component of the future and will require governance to reduce the social risks of AI and agriculture, raising issues involving data ownership, fairness, bias, explainability, and uh, legal implications. AI governance is essential to ensure that AI systems remain beneficial and safe. This will require a deep understanding of the opportunities and limitations of AI. 
To create good AI governance requires the cooperation of government officials, company officials, educational officials, and, and professional societies. It's also important for nations to work together to create a coherent AI governance across nations. Some of the issues to consider are uh, that AI is a black box. An input is provided to an algorithm and an output produced, but we do not know the, how the decision was made by the AI program. In machine learning, these black box models are created directly from data by an algorithm. The designer of the algorithm does not know how the variables inputted into the algorithm were combined. Even if one has a list of the input variables, black box predictive models can be so complex that no human can understand how the variables are processed to reach a final prediction. If I use AI to grade my undergraduate students' exams, a student might want to know why they did not get a better grade. If a patient gets a medical diagnosis, they may be uncomfortable not knowing why a given, given uh, treatment is prescribed. Another issue is bias. If the data which the algorithm was trained has biases, the AI program is likely to reflect those biases. If, if today high-level jobs are held mostly by men, an AI algorithm is likely to recommend men for such jobs. It's important that governance requires that training data has biases removed and that AI algorithms operate in a fair way. There's also the possibility of unintended consequences. Uh, if we ask an AI program how to eliminate the coronavirus, it might respond, kill all humans. If we ask how to eliminate jaywalking, a human might say, fence the street. An AI program might say, eliminate the street. If I ask an AI program how do I keep squirrels from my bird feeder? An AI program might say, don't put seeds in the feeder. Another important issue is, is program uh, security. AI programs will be involved in all aspects of our lives. It's important to develop design standards that will ensure that programs are correct and they cannot be compromised. It is known that slight changes of an image of a cat submitted to a deep network will change the classification of the image from cat to airplane, even though an individual would not perceive the changes. There's also the issue of mistakes. Uh, who is responsible for a self-driving car accident? The maker of the car? The owner of the car? the designer of the self-driving algorithm, uh, it's clear that our legal systems need to be updated to handle issues that will arise in the information age. We need AI programs that continue to learn. It's important that AI programs continue. It's not possible to train an AI program for a self-driving car to understand all situations that might arise. AI programs need to continue to learn just as a driver learns. In the future, uh, the percentage of population needed to produce all the goods and services will be small. How do we create meaningful activities for the remainder of the population? AI governance needs to ensure that quality of life will be preserved. AI will generate significant wealth for countries. How will it be distributed? Fairness is an issue so that all levels of people are taken care of. And what will be the impact on society if social action is significantly reduced? Uh, the training of AI will involve enormous quantities of data. This raises the issue as to who will own the data. Will data used in one country be stored in another? This has already become a major issue 
for communication media, search engines, and programs involving data, such as programs for contact uh, tracing for COVID suppression. These are just a few of the issues that need to be considered. It's important that all parties have a say in the creation of AI governance that will be to ensure that our world is safe and fair. Uh, this concludes my remarks. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you so much, Professor Zhang E. Hopcroft, and a very clever way to point out the different dilemma by the AI. Next, I'd like to present Ms. Zhang Xiao. Talk about exploring AI governance by open and collaborative social experiment. Thank you, Chair. Hello, everyone. This is Zhang Xiao from China IGF. Congratulations on the 17th IGF and this forum. Today, I would like to share my view about the social experiment marriage in China. Uh, as we know, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres emphasized two extremely important things in the 21st century. One is a climate change, and another one is a digitalization. As we are entering the intelligent society, AI plays a very important role in many ways, as well as the governance of AI. I know there are a lot of discussions from prepared forums such as UNESCO, G20, OECD, and etc. And there are consensus about AGL, human-centered, transparent, trustworthy, responsible. Well, I understand technology is not just technology. It's more than that. Technology is about society and so technology is about culture. That's why practice and experiments from different countries deserve our attention. Well, as we know, that tech innovation is a driving force for our sustainable development, especially the new generation of AI has driven our society in three ways. First, AI created a new factor of production, which is intelligent. That means we can do a lot of things that we cannot before, and AI can be adaptive and agile. The second is AI has restructured the traditional economy and promoted digital economy, which added a new value to the whole economy based on data-driven innovation. Third, as a general purpose technology, AI enables multidisciplinary disciplinary innovation. That means that different sectors are working together to find better solutions for the well-being of mankind, such as to improve the quality of our life. How the society will benefit from this? Well, we are enjoying the efficiencies, conveniences, and all other benefits from AI. There are risks and challenges as well. For example, when it solves the problem of information overload with algorithm, it might lead to information cocoons and social polarization. When it helps with universal healthcare, it might raise the problem of data abuse and privacy violation. When it empowers SMEs with deep synthetic technology, it might create fake news and social mistrust. So all these challenges are something that we have to tackle together in the near future. In this context, I'm thinking that what should be done to avoid throwing the baby out with the bathwater? Well, I think the AI social experiment in China, which was launched by the community, is a good case. Personally, I want to make three comments. And the first is, uh, this experiment can accumulate generic governance experience. And this experience can be transferred and shared to other sectors. Now, the experiment is carried out in several sectors, such as intelligent medical care, autonomous driving, smart elder care, smart city, and public administration. And the experience can be shared and transferred to some other areas. And second, the best practice from China can contribute to the global community. Because of industry development, there are rich scenarios of digitalization in China. 
this cultivates a favorable environment for the application of AI, a systematic summary of the governance experience can provide a reference to the global community and to the global best practice. Third, uh, I think the challenge experiment is not to set a, just a only answer or standard answer. Rather, it is to foster diversified possibilities and inclusiveness for global solutions. As I mentioned, different countries have different systems and cultures that requires us to respect the diversity and the different approaches of AI governance. And China's social experiment is one step toward this goal. Before I end my speech, I would like to mention one thing I think that is very important. In May 2020, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres released a report named Roadmap for Digital Collaboration, which proposed supporting global collaboration in AI as one of eight actions. Also in September last year, in the report of our common agenda, he mentioned strengthening digital cooperation and develop developing a global digital compact as one of the 12 action plans. These UN actions indicate a very important phase and is urgent a new stage of global digital cooperation. I want to highlight this. So each contribution is valuable. Based on evidence, I think China's AI social experiment is not only efforts to domestic government governance demands, but also a contribution to the global community and the response to the UN action call. So uh, I suggest that in future, and I'm glad to know to hear from Professor Su that China's AI governance program is going to be more open and collaborative and there will be more data sharing, cases sharing, and more people will be engaged. And I think just, uh, I hope that more people can get engaged since we understand that this is an interactive process, interactive process. Well, just some comments and open to questions, suggestions, and cooperation feedback from you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Zhang Xiao, for your wonderful sharing. Indeed, technologies also are parts of our culture and our life. Now let me give the floor to the next speaker, uh, Professor Simon Marvin from the University of Sheffield. Uh, for personal reasons, Professor couldn't be here with us today, but he sent kindly his video for us. Welcome. Hello, uh, my name is Simon Marvin. I'm a professor at the University of Sheffield in the Urban Institute, and I'm really delighted to be invited uh, along to speak to the forum today. And uh, I send my best wishes to you from Australia, where I'm working at the moment, um, to, to Chinese colleagues from Shanghai, Nanjing and Beijing. And I look forward to being able to meet you face to face, hopefully next year. So I want to just talk very briefly, just for um, seven minutes, about urban AI in China and why, um, as an academic based um, in the UK, I'm really very, very interested in the work that's being undertaken by policymakers and academics on um, urban AI and what its uh, national and international significance is. So as a scholar, I'm an urban geographer, urban planner, and I've had a significant interest in smart cities and the application of digital capacity to urban management and governance. And I've done quite a lot of work published by MIT and Routledge on looking at the development of, of smart urbanism and really trying to understand how it reshapes um, urban management, how it introduces new efficiencies, how it develops new control capacities. Now, the, the particular, my particular interest um, is what happens after the smart city. If we think about the smart city as being a, about the application of digital technologies and the utilization of data, 
I think there's something quite significant happening now. It's, um, it's almost like the application of fourth industrial revolution technologies, the technologies of automation, robotics, drones, and AI are now being tested, applied, and demonstrated in urban contexts. So these systems have come out of the factory, out of the sort of enclosed private spaces, and are now becoming important for urban experimentation. And these might have significant implications for all aspects of urban life and decision making, how we control infrastructures and how they become integrated into healthcare, policing, mobility, and urban planning. And I'm particularly in interested in the way in which there has been internationally um, a new round of experimentation with the use of drones, autonomous vehicles, and service robots. This is particularly accelerated by the pandemic. Um, the utilization of AI systems, facial recognition, sensors and their application decision making platforms and i think what's interesting is this this questions this raise about new forms of augmentation of human decision making and control in an urban context and i think this is really quite a significant new research agenda we need to actually extend our current analysis of smart cities and smart urbanism and start to think about what do AI and robotics mean for citizens and cities? How do they become woven into the fabric of urban life? Are they partners? Are robots employed in very specialist, difficult environments? Or do they become assistants that can help us uh, navigate urban life? What are the leading cities AI and robotic experimentation and why? And I think these are not the same urban areas that necessarily let the sort of smart cities um, technological experimentation and what can we learn from these sorts of first mover experiments and for some sort of systematic understanding of how these reshape urban life and infrastructures is really critical and i think what's very interesting um i was able to visit china in 2019 and time in hangzhou shanghai and nanjing and saw the way in which china's national aspirations for leadership in ai were being, um, being played out through experiments that were being undertaken by the government in partnership with corporates to explore how uh, AI and robotic technologies can become integrated into uh, different dimensions of urban life. And a particular interest is the way in which certain cities are positioning themselves as almost national test beds because of the incredibly well-resourced um, AI uh, priorities, Shanghai and Pudong has been really uh, fundamental to testing out um, AI in a whole set of multi-level initiatives at different types of policy in, within local government, but also materially through AI, uh, for example, AI Island, which has become a little bit of a test bed for exploring how these applications can be applied in uh, sectors like waste disposal. Um, the Alibaba City Brain um, has this vision of an integrated platform along with other uh, corporates, um, Alibaba, iVision, who specialise in CCTV. And they're sort of congestion products which can be applied for wider areas around security uh, and the control of infrastructure is another example of this sort of level of experimentation. And I think it's really important that we partly understand, as I know colleagues in China are doing, the implications for social governance, but we also need to understand the implications for urban management. One of the most interesting test beds is, uh, is Gion, the new extension to Beijing, where a whole set of emergent technologies, including robots, the city brain, uh, blockchain, and digital twins, um, are being uh, offered as new ways of thinking about the integration of planning and digital and robotic technologies. And I think this provides a really important test bed through which we begin to apply research to understand how these capacities change the way in which we think about the management of infrastructure, the planning of cities, and to really start to tease out what, what does autonomous 
What do these autonomous systems offer in terms of efficiency, optimization? What are the sorts of problems and issues that they raise as they become integrated in busy, peopled and congested cities? Now, why does this matter? Now, I, I think it's really important that we develop a sort of internationally comparative analysis of the application of AI, robotic and autonomous systems to urban life. There's been a huge amount of work done on smart cities, but actually these systems and technologies are probably even more profound in what they do because of their ability to automate decision-making, but also their kinetic, their ability to intervene through um, delivery, um, automated vehicles, and the way in which they can um, actually they can change the structure and uh, outside of buildings. They can automate and roboticize um, education, health, and policing. But the question is, the applications so far are relatively limited or of beds, but we need to understand the new geographies, the new entrants, and the new coalitions that are being formed because they're not the same as the smart city. And China occupies a particular space of experimentation, which is unique because of the national nature of the program of urban experimentation. Other cities, there's other co contexts. Japan's quite interesting because of the commitment to robotics, the big emphasis on drones and delivery vehicles. Um, cities in the Middle East are experimenting with the use of robots in public services, mobility, policing. But China perhaps has the most synthetic and strategic program. So the second thing is, Although the experimentation has been limited, there's now been an extension in the use of test beds, specialist zones, and regulatory innovation. So we need to understand what, what, what sorts of systems of regulation need to be stretched or enlarged or created to enable these sorts of robotic experiments to take place. What new questions do they open about the sharing of roads and public space, pavements, sidewalks? And how are the relationships between robots, robots and humans managed within buildings and within different services? The issue is, the third step is that there's clearly some significant sim similarities with smart cities, but this is a distinctive new agenda and potentially more transformative. And it's sort of, in the way that it points to the emergence of a post-human autonomous city in which decision-making and action is enabled by AI and autonomous systems. And this level of functionality raises questions about how do we think of the interaction between humans and machines? And I think that's the critical challenge that we need to, as urban researchers, need to start thinking about how, how are relationships hybridized? How do humans work with robots? And what sorts of questions that raises for thinking about the future of urban studies? So I think the Chinese context is really rich. It's an awful lot that can be learned through this experience, particularly around the utilization of platforms, digital twins, the automation of particular forms of infrastructures like waste and energy. And I look forward to working with colleagues on this agenda um, in the future, especially when we have the opportunity to, to, to have further discussions about how internationally we build a comparative understanding of what the new sort of robotically and AI-enabled urbanism offers but also delimits. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Simon, for your presentation. I'd like to present to you Professor Huang Cui, Dean of the Institute of the National Intelligence Society Governance at Zhejiang University to talk about building a people-centered global data governance framework for the benefit of mankind. Because of uh, the time arrangement, we have to conclude before 10.15, so please make sure that you can keep your good timing. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening. It gives me great pleasure to be part of uh, the IGF 2022 Open Forum, and I'd like to thank the Secretary for their great efforts and arrangement for this meeting. So today we're living in a presented digital smart society, where the amount of uh, social data is growing explosively. Information technology is changing rapidly. Cyberspace is really integrated with the real world, and the technology such as big data, artificial intelligence, and metaverse provide more intelligent options and possibilities 
virtual governance. And as this forum, innovatively use 3D virtual venue format to allow people, uh, more people to participate in an equal way. In the process, applying various of intelligent technology, various of cells and society, the amount of data of the world is growing exponentially. Especially after 2019, when the data collection and demand explode. So in the world today, big data collection and analytics are everywhere. In the private sector, big data analysis is widely used in consumer analysis, personalized services, marketing, and predictive analysis of advertising. And they became a new momentum for the world's economy development and actually the value of data elements. And uh, also, the public sector is also using more and more big data analysis, playing more important role. For example, in the healthcare sector, big data analytics has created a paradigm for country's healthcare delivery system. Healthcare professionals have access to more comprehensive information to provide valuable care. And also, with uh, the big data analysis, the energy sector can prepare better patterns and also the environmental alerts and uh, the national economy sector also created financial models from historical economic data to shape the future economic development policies. So we could see that with massive data, it brings opportunities to social governance and also it poses extremely serious challenges in terms of uh, the data rights, privacy boundaries of data intelligence analysis. So today we're here to share with you how could we establish a data governance, a global data governance framework? And that's something we should think about. And for example, the global data governance has already become the important data for the world. At the same time, the different countries also have uh, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, claims on the storage and uh, the mining of value of uh, the data. So based on the different uh, analysis and disputes in terms of uh, the uh, data analysis, we're facing with a lot of challenges and there are different significance and backgrounds. So we believe that the whole world should think about how to build a new framework of the data governance to make it more inclusive. And based on what we could establish the smart uh, intelligent society warmer facing with the different challenges how could we form a data governance mechanism to be well prepared for the smart society we hope that we could build a framework of uh, the data governance to promote the formation of the rules so that even if there could be conflicts and uh, disputes among nations in terms of international cooperation, we still find hope. In face with uh, a lot of data governance issues, no countries can stand alone. So we believe that for different countries, different players, based on the core part of the data governance, we hope that we could form a consensus to form the framework for the data governance so that we can contribute to a more inclusive society. The second proposal is that we hope that uh, we can coordinate the role of international organizations in constructing the global data governance framework because they are important communication platform for the data governance. We hope that we can do more discussion on these topics so that uh, we can invite the participation of the different stakeholders to establish the long-term and equal platform for communication and promote the construction of inclusive human-centered global data governments. The past, present, and future of human history are closely connected, and the human society is more closely connected in the global data governments. We look forward to the data space community in the field of uh, global data governance to realize a trust-based, human-centered, intelligent governance of data. Thank you. That's for me. Thank you, Professor Huang Cui, for your presentation. Next, I'd like to invite one last speaker, the associate, the researcher of the Secretary General of the Expert Advisory Committee of the National AI Innovation and Development at Zoom in Shanghai, researcher Wang Yingchen. Yes, friends, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to be part of this forum. The international census 
on the smart society has been formed, uh, which is based on human orientation. But we are still facing with a lot of challenges of a difficult implementation of governance principles, separation of soft and hard research, and fragmentation of our governance organization. So we need to build the uh, artificial intelligence governance based system, combining a soft and hard, which means that the value of the society technology application should be integrated in that way. So the value can be integrated into technology so the application can also reflect the rules so that they can forward the development of each other. And we could use the internal and the external pathways. For example, for external pathway, we can use some basic tools to train the AI and do the uh, augmentation so that we can form and improve the effect of AI. For the internal pathway, we could use specific measures to do the embeddement of the value into the whole process, like fairness, privacy, etc. They could be integrated into the different works of t technology. And uh, judging from the situation right now, we are facing with a lot of uh, different value claims, etc., advocated by the scientists, which are the embodiment of the combination of those two pathways. And in order to promote the implementation of the governance principles, we still need in-depth combination of uh, different expertise. And the key of uh, our governance is the understanding and conversion integration of uh, different uh, uh, aspects, as well as uh, the feedback and uh, verification. The different experts and uh, practitioners from different industries did a lot of industrial solution research. We found two very interesting parts. For example, the knowledge matchmaking like the data categorization or taxonomy are quite different in different industries. And second, the differentiation of uh, the cognition of uh, different uh, groups, like uh, the artificial uh, medical analysis, especially on the imaging, etc., especially those applied to the rare diseases, while the long tail effects was not that obvious. And also, we try to establish some global AI governance rules. Generally speaking, I believe that the governance of the smart society needs a broader knowledge integration and participation in the society, as well as cross-cultural understanding. And if we could join hands to add further to build the innovative system that we could better support the governance. That's for me. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for sharing with us from a totally different perspective, um, pointing a very clear direction for all of us. Well, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the keynote speech of today's forum now has ended here. Hopefully, this forum can become a very important starting point for us for more innovations and more communications, as well as partnerships in this specific field. And also, we can maximize the role of science and technology in promoting the quality of our life. So at the request of our host, we will skip the Q&A part of this evening session. Hopefully, we can find more opportunities for further discussions in the near future so as to make our joint contribution to this uh, smart uh, governance in the society while addressing the new problems and uh, challenges in the future. Again, thank you very much for your participation and contribution. Thank you. Good night.